been posting at 166. I've had a little bit of insulin resistance the past two days. Um, been kind of riding like between like 90 and 170, kind of ish. Um, not quite sure why, but just kind of rolling with the punches. And um, I'll probably be making some adjustments here soon if this continues past my period because I am wrapping up my period right now, which isn't fun. Um, caused a very dangerous low blood sugar, which probably guys have seen. And then when I would get high, it would cause extreme insulin resistance. So not exactly the most fun period I've had to deal with. But anyways, type 1 diabetes is going to roll a bunch of things at you. So with that being said, we'll jump into today's video. It's Maddie welcome or welcome back to my channel and as you can tell by the title of today's video I did a caffeine experiment for you guys to kind of see how caffeine itself affects blood sugar now what is caffeine caffeine is usually found in coffees teas and diet drinks it is a stimulating type of drug and it actually is classified as a drug um, it's designed to kind of stimulate your body to kind of get more energy it makes you feel kind of more energized peppier um, but caffeine can also be known to mess with blood sugars. Now, not everybody that has caffeine um, is going to have a problem with their blood sugar. Um, the main thing that I was focused on in this experiment was to look for a drastic change in blood sugar. Uh, did it drastically raise my blood sugar is what I wanted to know because if that was the case, then I should be bolusing for things that really don't have any carbs like diet soda, coffee, or plain tea. Um, I should be bolusing for those if my blood sugar all of a sudden were to skyrocket just from the caffeine. Now keep in mind the experiment I did conduct. I tried to conduct around the same time. It was between my breakfast and my lunch. Basically when there would be only basal insulin in my body, there was a few times I did have Humalog in my system, um, which could have helped aided any um, caffeine spike, but that's why I did it for three days in a row. So I took, for the first three days, I did green tea with nothing added to it. Um, and each day I would record my before blood sugar on my uh, Dexcom G6 one hour after consuming the drink and two hours after. And I would try to consume the drink within 30 minutes time, sipping on it, obviously not guzzling it and obviously not sipping it over a period of five hours because it's not allowing the caffeine to all get dispersed in your body at a, at a similar rate. The next following three days, I did um, regular coffee, black coffee, no added creams or anything. The only thing I did add was a drop of stevia because I cannot stomach the very bitter flavor of coffee. Um, to me, black coffee puts hair, to me it's like I'm going to get hair on my chest if I drink it that strong. So I added like one or two drops of liquid stevia, which I will insert pictures as I show you here, that the stevia, the liquid stevia has no carbs, no protein, um, or no fats or calories or carbohydrates that can add um, to that blood sugar spike. And for the final three days, I did Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, Diet Mountain Dew is probably one of the most caffeinated drinks out there next to Coke and some of the other ones. Um, and um, I did the same thing and drank a certain amount between breakfast and lunch to see what would happen. Now keep in mind that this experiment isn't perfectly conducted only because there were a few times that I had Humalog in my system, but that's why I did multiple days. Like any good experiment, you repeat multiple times around the same time to see if there's a pattern. Um, and the only other uh, error, I error I had in this experiment was that um, the coffee and the Diet Mountain Dew, the Diet Mountain Dew was a 20 ounce for 91 milligrams of caffeine. Um, eight ounces of coffee is approximately 90 milligrams of caffeine. But the tea uh, at eight ounces is only about 20 some or 30 some milligrams of caffeine. So theoretically speaking, I should have drank three eight ounce cups of tea in order to equivalent to the coffee and the um, diet soda. But um, you guys are going to kind of get the gist here. Um, and even so, even the amount of caffeine I drink, all I'm looking for is a significant spike. I'm looking to see if there's a drastic change in my blood sugar, even with the most minimal amount of caffeine. Now do keep in mind that this is pretty standard what I did. One cup of coffee, one cup of plain green tea, um, one bottle of, you know, a cup and a half or two, two and a half cups of diet soda or diet fizzy drinks. Um, keep in mind if you were going to drink a bunch of these in a row, you may have different results because obviously if you're drinking two or three cups of black coffee in the morning, that is um, well over uh, 200 milligrams of caffeine right there, which could spike your blood sugar 
but me only drinking, you know, drinking only 90 may have not raised it as much. Um, so for right now, I'm going to put pictures in here of the tea, the coffee, and the diet soda, and the stevia. I'm going to put pictures here of what they looked like. And then I'll get into um, opening up my phone, doing a screen recording, and showing you the data that I collected. So here are the pictures, and then we'll come back and rejoin for the data table. Okay, we should have the screen recording come up somewhere in here, but as you can see on this caffeine experiment here, the first box or the first table is for the green tea, eight ounces of plain green tea, about 30 milligrams of caffeine. On day one, um, as you can see, I have things color coded. The blue color is my original starting blood glucose, followed by one hour post meal or post drink um, in yellow and two hours post drink in like a bright lime green. Um, and I also included parentheses for millimoles, but I will uh, share those with you if you can't quite see them. But on day one of the uh, green tea um, part, my starting blood sugar was 96 or 5.3 and stable. One hour after I was 74, uh, 4.1 and stable. I did have to treat that low um, because I was going to be active. Now, um, normally I would leave a 74 coast. However, because I was going to be active, I treated a low, quote unquote low blood sugar with um, like eight grams of rapid carbs or six grams, just enough to bump it up. And then at two hours post um, drink, I was 111 or 6.2 and slight arrow headed up. And day number two, I was starting at 104, which is 5.8 with a slight arrow headed down. By one hour uh, post drink, I was 88, 4.9 and stable. And by two hours post uh, tea, I was 74, 4.1 and stable. On day three and the final day of the tea part of the experiment, I was 141 to begin with. Um, that was a little bit of a high blood sugar from breakfast. I was 7.8 millimoles. So I corrected that high with a half a unit of Humalog. Um, by one hour post breakfast, I was 91 of 5.1 with a slight arrow headed down. And by two hours post drink, I was 82 or 4.6 and stable. So if you look at the green tea part of it, green tea really does not affect my blood sugar, even though that one day I did have active Humalog in my body that could have aided that caffeine. Um, based upon the original two days, um, when there was no added Humalog besides just the stuff that I wore off from breakfast two hours prior with just basal insulin. So the analysis from the green tea, um, obviously I had one day that I had Humalog active in my body just beyond basal insulin. Um, so that could have kind of played with helping with the caffeine. Um, however, um, I don't think green tea really affects my blood sugar based upon those two days that I originally did. There wasn't really a lot of change. There wasn't a drastic spike in blood sugar. If anything, my blood sugars kind of stayed the same or even, um, went down a little bit. The only reason why they went up on the first day is because I had to treat a quote unquote low. Um, but there was no obviously significant rises, especially that one hour after drinking is where I would be most concerned in looking for a blood sugar spike from caffeine. It would be pretty instantaneous because you're drinking a liquid that easily is absorbed into the bloodstream through the stomach and the digestive system. So I would say green tea at 30 milligrams a cup is pretty safe for me to drink without worrying about bolusing. Now we'll move on to the second table, which is the black coffee portion. I drank eight ounces of black coffee with a couple drops of stevia to take away the bitter flavor. This coffee had approximately 95 milligrams per eight ounces, so this is a little bit stronger, um, but again, nothing really added to it that could affect blood sugar. As you saw in my picture slide, that stevia really wasn't gonna affect anything. So on day one, I started out with 117, which was 6.5 and stable. One hour after drinking that first black cup of black coffee, I was 86 or 4.8 and stable. And um, by two hours, um, pretty much no change, 85 or 4.7 and uh, a stable blood sugar. Day two, I started out with 78 or 4.3 with a slight arrow headed down. I did have to treat a low, um, but I didn't treat it very much just because I was uh, flattened out really, really quickly. I think I used like four or five grams of a rapid acting carb, so like one glucose tablet. 
Um, at one hour of post drinking this coffee, I was 80 or 4.4 and stable. And come two hours after drinking this cup of coffee, I was 106 or 5.9 and stable. Day number three, I started off with 130 blood sugar, um, which is 7.2 and stable. I did not correct. Um, but afterwards, after breakfast, I kind of had a, a harder time um, because I woke up a little later that day or earlier. I don't remember. It was screwing with my schedule a little bit um, that my body's accustomed to for eating breakfast. So um, I kind of shot up to 165, but I'm pretty sure that this was from breakfast um, because I kind of had a heavier fat breakfast, which is 9.2 and stable. I treated this high because I did under bolus for breakfast. Like I mentioned here, it was kind of a high fat, high carb, kind of took a guess at it. Um, but then by the time that correction kicked in and two hours after drinking this cup of coffee, I was 143 or 7.9 and stable. So overall for coffee, I don't think coffee really is a big deal for me either. Um, based upon the first two days, it doesn't really mess with me too much. Um, however, I don't think if I would start drinking coffee if my blood sugar was above like 200 or something, just because in case there is any effect, um, you may be more insulin resistant to your basal insulin um, or um, caffeine in general. Keep in mind that only thing that was really aiding me with this caffeine experiment was basal insulin, unless I described that I was correcting a high, which was um, uh, a case of two or three times in this whole experiment of like the several times that I was testing and analyzing things. So uh, keep that in mind when I'm talking about different things. But I think um, honestly, coffee is not an issue for me either. Again, it's, I think it's quantity too. If I was going to drink three cups of coffee, then maybe yes, but drinking a standard one cup of coffee with a few drops of stevia really doesn't do much. And the third and final drink that I chose for the final three days was diet soda, which was diet Mountain Dew. I had to drink 20 ounces, which is a typical one big bottle that you would get from a gas station. And that has approximately 91 milligrams of caffeine, which is about the same as uh, the coffee. But obviously, um, more caffeine, or the same amount of caffeine packed into more liquid. So on day one, I started at 93 or 5.2 and stable um, for my original blood sugar. By one hour after drinking this first thing of uh, Diet Mountain Dew, I was 90 or 5.0 and stable. And come from two hours after drinking, I was 87 or 4.8 and stable. So really not a lot of change um, from that. The second day, um, I started out with 158, which is 8.8 and stable. I did treat this high blood sugar, so I did take a unit of Humalog, I believe. Um, come one hour after drinking Diet Mountain Dew, I was 103, which is 5.7 and stable. And then leading up to the final two hours after drinking the Diet Mountain Dew, I was 83, which is 4.6 and stable. The third and final day of drinking Mountain Dew and the very last day of this whole nine-day caffeine experiment, I started out with a blood sugar of 124, which is 6.9 and stable by one hour after um, I was 137 or 7.6 and stable. And by two hours after I was 112, which is 6.2 and stable. Again, this diet soda really doesn't seem to affect me. If any of these um, affect me the least, it's probably the diet soda. Of all three, um, I particularly um, don't see too many issues with any of these caffeines that I was drinking. And again, um, I'm looking for a drastic change in blood sugars. I'm looking from going maybe starting out at a 90 and then ending up at a 200 um, over two hours. I'm, I'm looking for drastic rises more than maybe 40 or 50 points um, just from drinking caffeine. That was my main goal in this experiment was to look for that. And I did definitely did not see any of it um, from the blood sugars that I recorded and recorded by looking at my Dexcom G6, which is a continuous glucose monitor. Would this be done different if I blood sugar finger stuck a little bit? Uh, sure. Would this be different if I drank different types of black coffees or teas without added sugar? Probably. Would it be different with different diet sodas? Possibly. And would it definitely be different if I drank more quantities of the coffee or the tea or the soda? Absolutely. But I was just thinking of standard things at a standard time with only basal insulin in my body just to see how my body was going to respond. Now keep in mind there are millions of factors that affected this experiment. It could have been anything from hormones to temperature um, to just if my body was being more stubborn and more insulin resistant or more re sensitive 
on a certain day or if it was nice and steady. Um, there's so many different things that played into a factor into this experiment, but overall I think I did a pretty good job of encapsulating that caffeine really does not impact my blood sugar. At least standard amounts of caffeine um, in, in between a meal without um, bolus insulin active for most of that. Um, so as always, what I share on my videos aren't necessarily going to uh, impact your blood sugars in the same way. Uh, I'm encouraging you to do your own experiments with caffeine and just see what kind of happens. I'm kind of curious to know if any of you uh, play around with it and see if you have problems with caffeine. Um, I do hear of some people having problems drinking diet soda because it makes their blood sugar spike. It's possible that you could have a spike from that artificial sweetener. Um, I hear some people having really nasty blood sugar spikes from caffeine and they have to bowl us for a black cup of coffee in the morning. It's interesting to me that there are some people that are less affected by caffeine than others. Now, like I said, the amount of caffeine I took in was probably not um, a huge amount. Um, I just did something kind of standard, kind of basic and easy that everybody could wrap their head around. And I'm not a huge coffee drinker, nor am I a huge um, con consumer of like diet drinks or teas all the time. I don't consistently do it. But I just wanted to see if I consistently did this over nine days with three different uh, types of drinks over a course of three days with each different drink to see what would kind of happen. But obviously you could tell based upon my numbers that there is no drastic change or spike in blood sugar from caffeine. So I hope you enjoyed this experiment. As always, always check with your doctor if you want to try something like this um, or check around um, with your own self because obviously knowing what I'm going through is going to be way different than what you go through. But you guys know and I know, know that caffeine from standard black coffee, tea, or diet drinks does not affect my blood sugar. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I post videos every single week about diabetes plus more. Uh, continue to stay tuned. Um, I've got lots of great videos coming out for you guys. And I'm really appreciating all the comments and the interaction I'm getting from all of you. It is so fun. And I appreciate all the interaction I'm getting. It means the world to me. It's a lot of fun to share experiences and get encouragement from people that live with the same condition as you do. And I'm glad I've been able to help a lot of you guys. So until tomorrow for another video, take care. God bless. Be kind, spread positivity, and be thankful. Bye. Everybody.